Secret Weapons, and today we are looking at The Eon's Fuzz by Walrus Audio. You're about to hear me rant and rave about a fuzz pedal for a couple of minutes. Before we jump into that, I think it's really, really important for me to be uh, very upfront and transparent with you, the audience, uh, and let you know that yes, this is a sponsored video, uh, as many videos on this channel are, as indicated by wherever, whatever corner the sponsored content label shows up in at the start of this video. Uh, but beyond that, I wanted to let you know uh, the link in the description to buy this fuzz pedal, if you decide to go take a look at it, is an affiliate link uh, for my my channel, which means if you buy this pedal from Walrus, it does actually help out the channel, it helps me out, uh, kind of helps fund the channel in general. Um, I don't show for anything I don't believe in on this channel. Um, I wouldn't be here talking about it. I wouldn't say, and I, I, under no circumstances do I say anything I believe to be untrue about a piece of gear on this channel, but I wanted to kind of front load the full transparency of everything here. If you pick one of these up through the link down below, it will help the channel out. Um, and that's all I have to say. Let's, let's get into it. I think what a lot of traditionalist fuzz enthusiasts look for in a modern fuzz pedal tends to be a hard and fast commitment to the old way of doing things. Uh, a fuzz pedal that shirks flexibility and versatility in favor of kind of vintage authenticity. And I am not one of those people. I don't consider myself to be remotely a fuzz expert. I would barely consider myself to be a real fuzz enthusiast in general. Uh, it's a side of guitar clipping drive flavors I would consider myself to be very, very unversed in. Uh, but what I can tell you is this. The thing that drives me crazy with most fuzzes that I see entering the marketplace is a lack of flexibility. Uh, if the sound isn't the thing I'm going for and there's no way for me to tailor it to get at least closer to where I want it to be, I have no interest in it. Enter Eons by Walrus Audio, the most flexible fuzz I have ever used and one of the best sounding fuzzes I have ever played. The first reason I would say that this is the most flexible fuzz I have ever played, even before we get into the real reasons, even at the EQ level, having bass and treble controls separately with the ability to boost and cut both your highs and lows allows you to dial in exactly the bright and thick or thin or articulate style of fuzz that you want. And that's incredibly useful, even if you want to use this as the world's most basic uh, Big Muff style circuit. For my money, so many Big Muffs out there get overly wooly. They get too dark and like a blanket thrown over top of your guitar tone if you're not careful. But if you overly brighten it with those single tone controls on a lot of fuzzes, you will lose so much of that low end that it kind of defeats the purpose in my mind of having that wall of sound Big Muff tone in the first place. Uh, that two band EQ right off the bat incredibly useful. Up top you have volume and gain. There is a massive amount of gain on tap in this pedal and there needs to be because it plays so, so carefully and so intricately with this voltage control in the top center. And this is probably the secret sauce of this pedal. You have an adjustable voltage control for the circuit, starting all the way down at around three volts, which will give you that heavily gated, dying nine volt battery sound. It'll dramatically lower your volume. It'll thin out your sound. It will give that plinky, broken thing. And it will kind of progressively fill as you increase that voltage all the way up to 18 volts, which is just the richest and most full sounding fuzz tone I have ever used. Uh, and I'm not kidding on that front here. Uh, when you take that thing up to somewhere between 12 and 18 volts on this thing, it is that beautiful, rich, smooth, everything I've ever wanted out of that kind of Big Muff style circuit right on tap right there. Uh, when that thing is all the way up at 18 like that, I can take that gain now down to next to zero and it just sounds huge and full. Uh, with, especially without sounding overly saturated, it sounds just dialed. And as you take that voltage down, you can bring that gain up to match and kind of play with that volume control as well because you're going to lose the volume with that voltage control. But on that intro, you heard a bunch of stuff that doesn't sound like that saggy wall of sound fuzz thing. There's a lot of very kind of like ripping, articulate, bright, velcro-y fuzz sounds on this thing. And those are all found by bringing up that gain in kind with pulling down that voltage control down to around noon, just above noon, where you would start getting some of that gating effect from that dying battery sound. But for my money, anything in between about one o'clock 
and full clockwise on this thing is just some of the best fuzz tones I've ever heard. Uh, that kind of Velcro thing that people talk about with fuzz, I've never understood the appeal. Uh, I've never been able to use, I've never found a fuzz that I think does that in a way that I found myself going, I would totally use this in context. Obsessed here, obsessed here. And last, but certainly not least, the reason you need all of these controls is because if you're familiar with Walrus's kind of recent overdrive offerings, this is the latest in their time nomenclature drive series. This is a five position rotary knob down in the bottom middle here that will kind of move through five distinct and very, very different sounding clipping options for the fuzz circuit in this thing. And this is the part where I want to reiterate I am not a fuzz expert. Uh, I read through all five settings on here. Uh, you, have, you have a combination of LED, silicone, and germanium clipping options, soft and hard clipping, bass boosts added into certain circuits. I don't know what represents what. I don't know what in this thing is supposed to be a fuzz face versus a tone bender versus a big muff. Uh, but what I can tell you is uh, modes one and three are my standouts. Uh, I basically live in those two, but I jumped around a lot and you will find almost comically different sounds as you jump from clipping mode to clipping mode in this thing. Uh, you will find yourself making massive changes to your gain, bass, and treble as you move between them because they're such distinctly different circuits. Uh, I wanna say that I used mode four for that bunting clean guitar part on that thing. Yes, that was fuzz. That was fuzz with the voltage pulled down, the gain pulled down, the volume boosted, and a little bit of kind of fine tuning of the volume control on my guitar itself. But I ended up with this really wonderful, mostly clean guitar that was still causing some grit and some breakup in those delay repeats. And, and the versatility in this thing cannot be understated for me at least, I guess. But again, I am not a fuzz expert. So me talking about this feels like a little bit of a waste of time relative to just putting it back on the board, running through some sound samples and kind of showcasing the different clipping options. Uh, I don't think you need to be a fuzz aficionado to love this thing. I really don't. Uh, I wouldn't have considered myself to be one and I am obsessed. That intro song is one of my favorite things I've ever written. And that is entirely because the stuff that came out of my creative process was so heavily informed by what this thing was bringing me. The different distortion, light overdrive, and fuzz sounds that this thing's capable of is fascinating. So uh, I dig it. I think you will too. Uh, if you want to learn more about this or if you want to pick one up, there's a link in the description to my video uh, that will take you to the Walrus Audio website where this is available. Uh, full transparency, if you hit the link below and pick one of these up, uh, it does help out the channel. I want that transparency out there. And just you think that I'm not kind of shilling or blowing smoke, we're going to go to those sound samples so you can kind of hear and decide for yourself whether or not this is worth your time because it's worth my time. Before we get into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain and the context we're playing in. Uh, on our pedal board, we are running the Bondi FX 2026 compressor and the Sick As Mark III into the Blue Sky Reverb by Strymon into the Walrus Audio Eons. Uh, from there, we go up to the Timeline and the Big Sky, both in stereo, and then onward to our amplifiers, which are the Universal Audio Ruby and Dream in a stereo pair. Uh, because the Eon strikes me as such a flexible, uh, and versatile fuzz pedal. We're gonna use two different guitars for this portion of the video. Uh, we're gonna run through everything uh, kind of more in depth with my Josh Williams Stella with a humbucker in the bridge. And then we'll kind of roll back through all five clipping modes and run through kind of some just some basic gain structuring uh, with my bunting Melody Queen with a gold foil and a Telecaster pickup. Uh, I just think that this thing is so interesting in the way it reacts to uh, lower output clean pickups as well as a really high output uh, pickup like the one in this Josh Williams. And so I think we want to cover both sets. So this right here is going to be the humbucker portion of the video. And then we'll circle back around for some single coil tones as well. Before we bring in the eons, let's go ahead and listen to our kind of bass level clean tone context. This is the timeline and big sky with a tape delay and a plate both set pretty subtle. <laughs> Here is uh, full voltage, volume at noon, gain at zero, 
uh, base and treble at noon. And again, this is gain at zero, just to give you some context on how much saturation you get when that voltage is all the way up at 18. <laughs> So for context here, we are in the mode one. This is the silicone soft clipping. Uh, it's very kind of traditional, compressed smooth. This is the kind of big muffy sounding thing in my opinion here. Okay, let's start rolling back that voltage a little bit and hearing kind of how things change as you as you kind of reduce the voltage, not just in terms of gain, but the texture of the gain itself in this mode one. I mean, immediately we get into some of that more Velcro-y. The, the clipping is getting less smooth and more, uh, and more kind of hairy. start bringing in a little bit more gain. And again, if we keep that gain down at zero right now. So that might sound completely useless, but that's with gain at zero. And this is where that hyper interactive gain and voltage control starts to really shine. So you get those really plinky single notes, especially with your pick attack, like soft pick attack. But you bring in a chord, something with some kind of like harmonic content. And you get this really hairy, aggressive.
again, I don't think that you would really have a lot of use for going all the way down to three volts. Okay, before we start jumping through the different clipping modes, let's go ahead and uh, kind of run through min-max of that gain with the voltage kind of like right up shy of 18 volts, and then we'll play with that EQ and treble control. I think it's really mid scoopy.
Okay, let's jump on through some of these clipping modes. So that was all in mode one, which is silicone soft clipping. Uh, mode number two is going to be silicone clipping with added bass boost. Uh, so you're gonna get more compression out of it. It's gonna be a little bit crunchier, but you are probably going to immediately dial back that bass just a hair. At least that's been my experience with it. As we get into some of these other clipping modes, this is a great example of how differently the gain staging happens uh, from clipping mode to clipping mode. The amount of uh, drive on display right here. Versus this, it's immediately so much more because of that added uh, kind of grit and compression. That low end is giving you way more breakup way earlier. Yeah, this one gets really compressed really fast. For my money, this is going to be a mode that like right around that kind of medium high voltage amount. Kind of lower, lower gain, but like slightly lower voltage than that last mode uh, because it gets you that really rippy. I really like that mode. Yeah, that's a fun one. Okay, the next one is one I used a ton on the intro. Uh, like I said in my review, I feel like one and three are kind of my sweet spots on this thing. Uh, number three is going to be germanium soft clipping. Uh, it's almost more distortion than fuzz, which uh, appeals to me a lot if you've been watching this channel recently. <laughs> I mean, you can immediately hear the difference from 
with the current settings, mode one, very classic fuzz. Mode two is going to be that same classic fuzz with more bass and more compression. And then suddenly we're in this lower gain, germanium soft clipping thing. But with almost every mode on this thing, it's still going to sound great with full voltage and no gain. For some reason, everything sounds great on that. touch responsiveness of mode three really, really does speak to me. I really like how like broken that sounds, especially just below noon in this mode.
Okay, in keeping with these kind of dramatic shifts in uh, clipping options, we're jumping from germanium soft clipping in mode three over to LED clipping diodes uh, with a little bit of a high-end cut to it to make it sound kind of darker uh, in mode four. And again, it's gonna be like a comically different sound. So let's give that a listen. Last but not least, we have, oops. and last but not least, we have uh, mode five, which is going to be hard clipping silicone transistors combined with the LED and silicone diodes as well. Uh, it's a lot of compression. It's a lot of hair. It's a lot of gain. This is going to be kind of the like uh, in compressor in the compressor world. This is the all buttons pressed in mode. You can hear it already. I mean, how 
how are you how are you gonna not with that sound? Even everything dialed back. get a lot of compression on this one. just for fun. Okay, and we have circled back around to mode one and everything kind of back to where we started, uh, but now we are using our bunting Melody Queen T with a wolf tone tele pickup in the bridge and a mojo tone gold foil in the neck. This is what that bridge sounds like. And here's my neck. Much lower output than that Josh Williams by a mile. And so we're not going to run through like the full feature set like we just did, but we will kind of touch on some gain staging on each of the modes. So you've got a little bit of a sense of uh, how this compares to the Josh Williams era, and more specifically just humbuckers and kind of a loud semi-hollow guitar in general. This is a solid body guitar, lower output hum uh, pickups, and single coils.
I love how a good gold foil breaks up in the neck position. This is really where you're going to hear that kind of more distortion character in that germanium mode 3 really start to shine through in those single coils. Again, this calls into high relief the difference between the clipping modes on this thing.
is that? Is that a is that a goat? Can you say goat? Goat. Can you look up there? Can you say hi? Hi. Oh, is that that Velcro tone they were talking about? <laughs> this feels. Yep. Dad knows. <laughs> You did it! You did it! You balanced it! Alright, now say bye! Say bye! bye.